British Airways Flight 9 carried 248 passengers and 15 crew. The flight crew were first Captain Eric Moody, First Officer Roger Greaves and Senior Flight Engineer Barry Townley Freeman. The plane type was a Boeing 747236B. The journey would start at London Heathrow Airport, with the first stopover at Saha Airport in Bombay, secondly at Madras Airport, third at Sultan Abdul Aziz Shah Airport in Kuala Lumpur, fourth in Perth Airport, fifth in Melbourne, and finally end its journey at Auckland Airport. At around 8.40pm Java time, BA Flight 9 flew over the south of Java but started experiencing a phenomenon called St. Elmo's Fire, which looks something like this. Smoke then started to appear in the cabin area, presumed to be from a lit cigarette. Moments later, the smoke started to get thicker and there was an obvious smell of sulfur. Passengers then noted that the engines became unusually bright blue. Two minutes later, number 4 engines started to experience surge and soon flamed up, causing a loud bang and vibrations that rocked the plane. Mayday, 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 Stephen 9, we have lost all four engines, but it's a 370. Check on the control, Speedman 9, we have lost all four engines, now update the 360. Speedman 9, check on the control, is there a problem? Check on the control, Speedman 9, we have lost all four engines, repeat all four engines, now descending to flight level 350. Speedman 9, you have lost number four engine. Jakarta Control Speedman 9, we have lost all four engines. Repeat all four engines now descending to flight level 350. Speedman 9, all four engines out. Understood, Jakarta. Even though the flight crew was squawking the emergency transponder, ETC could not locate the current position. As the pressure in the cabin fell, oxygen mask began to fall from the ceiling. However, the first officer's mask was broken, leading to the flight crew to descend quickly. Because of the high mountains of South Java, the crew decided to turn around and ditch in the ocean, because they were gliding and couldn't avoid them. After attempting an engine restart drill, engine number 4 started to operate again. The captain then used his power to decrease the rate of descent into the ocean. Soon after, engine 3 also started followed by 1 and 2. The pilots then got a clearance to increase their altitude to stay clear of the mountains and headed for Jakarta airport. As the aircraft reached its target altitude, the St. Elmo's fire effect on the windscreen returned. The captain then throttled back but engine 2 surged again. The crew then held at 12,000 feet. As they approached Jakarta, they noticed that they couldn't see clearly out the windshield. Thinking it was water, they tried turning on their windshield wipers, but to no avail. The captain then noticed a small area on the bottom left corner of the windshield that he was able to see through. Further problems included unserviceable ground equipment to help them land and malfunctioning glide slope indicator, so they had to land manually and almost blind. British Airways Flight 9 landed with no casualties and suffered heavy damage due to flying into volcanic ash. Volcanic clouds consist fragments of pulverized rocks, volcanic glass, and many other minerals. In this dual fan engine, it comprises of inlet, axial flow compressor, combustion chamber, turbine, and exhaust. During normal operation, air is being drawn into the engine through the intake, compressed by several stages of compressors, 
brought into the combustion chamber for combustion refill and expelled through the turbine section as exhaust. When flying through the volcanic clouds, volcanic particles will be sucked into the engine. As the particles passes through the compressors, it becomes compressed and pressurized. With the internal temperature rising, the volcanic glass starts to melt and sticks onto the compressor blades, distorting airflow into the combustion chamber. After the combustion chamber, the particles will stick onto the turbine blades and further distort the airflow and jamming the blades, causing a reduce in power to the plane system. This also causes an engine surge or engine stall, which leads to the engine flame out. After the series of events with British Airways Flight 9, the Aviation Authority decided to review some of the aspects of aviation safety. The first will be regarding the collaboration between the aviation industry, meteorologists and volcanologists, thus VAACs, also known as Volcanic Ash Advisory Centers, were set up. This will allow information regarding the safety of flight in proximity of volcanic regions around the world. The next steps taken would be regarding the flight restriction of ash concentrations. Prior to this, if the ash concentration is about 0 mg per meter cube, the airspace is considered unsafe and is closed off. However, during the flight, the aircraft flew over the area as the ash clouds produced by the volcano look like a normal cloud at night due to poor visibility. Also, the volcano ash cloud was dry, thus, the weather radar on board did not pick it up as it was designed to detect moisture in clouds. The restriction was not feasible as airline companies loses a lot of money in the airspace is closed off. Thus, UKCAA together with engine manufacturers decided to set a safe upper limit of 2 mg per meter cube which was later revised to 4 mg per meter cube in May 2010. Another measure taken is that EasyJet collaborated with Airbus and Nikanika Aviation, a Norwegian company that works on infrared and ultraviolet technologies to develop a better way to detect airborne ash and they managed to produce a VOID which stands for Airborne Volcanic Object Imaging Detector, which was successfully tested in November 2013. It can detect ash up to 62 miles away, which allows the pilot to change route only if necessary. The following steps could be taken by pilot in the event the same thing happened again. Firstly, it takes great skill and a lot of experience to control the aircraft during power loss. During the engine surge or stall, the engine will lose power. However, with good control of the aircraft, allows a large mass of cold air to rush to the turbine, allowing the layers of glass to break up and thus get flushed out of the engine. This would allow the pilot to resume operation. To help with your understanding, here is a short clip from BBC. So how do these fine particles of volcanic dust bring an aircraft to its knees? Well, they clog important sensors, they uh, prevent the pneumatics from working particularly well, but they also have a very interesting and detrimental effect on the turbine blades. I'll show you what I mean. I'll fire this up. Now, this is the uh, explosion that's going on inside the jet engine the entire time. I'll give that a bit more oxygen. This is like the combustion chamber where there's a huge roaring furnace. And then this is the turbine at the back. Now, the hottest part of a jet engine gets to about 1,500 degrees. Volcanic dust melts at around 1,000 degrees. Now what happens is that dust that's like powdered glass drops into the combustion chamber, gets turned to molten glass, and then goes straight onto the turbine blades, giving a layer of molten glass on the blades. Now, these turbine blades are made to within a hair's width accuracy. You put a layer of thin glass on them, they no longer do the job they're supposed to do. I'm gonna put this mask on now because volcanic dust is not good for my inside. So, now this is the dust going into the jet engine. Starts melting, and then the glass starts to form in a layer on the turbine blade. Which means the blade is no longer operating efficiently and the engine starts dropping down. As luck would have it, there is a way out of this situation, but it requires 
nerves of steel. The pilot has to actually shut the engine down, then glide down through cold air. Right, now there's a layer of glass on there. I'll show you what happens now. You shut the engine off and you start putting cold air whistling through it. Look, you can see here, as the cold air is hitting the turbine blade, it's shrinking ever so slightly and it's enough to shatter the... There goes another piece. So the glass is shattering off the blade as we can see it here. This has actually happened. In 1982, a British Airways jet lost all four engines flying through volcanic dust over Indonesia. And they found this out by accident. The engines cut out, the thing fell out of the sky, gliding down, then suddenly it was able to restart its engines. It's because of this effect. But you wouldn't want to rely on it. 